the Wildlife Conservation Society WCS, um, and representing them is Mrs. Yamira Fuentes. Yamira. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm from the Wildlife Conservation Society. I'm the technical assistant for the terrestrial program. Um, and uh, we are from WCS, or oh, this is mine, right? Yes, think it that way. Um, today, I will be talking about WCS and wildlife crime, and I kept it very general. Um, I'm glad I didn't go hikiti focus because Ms. Felicia really put in all there when it comes to the hikiti portion. And so we'll be discussing basically three areas. Um, we have worked um, in wildlife crime, in IWC work, and combating wildlife um, in locally in Belize. So WCS, our mission is to um, save wildlife and wild places worldwide through science, conservation, education, and inspiring people to value nature. Um, I'm really big on the inspiring people to value nature. Our vision is to, uh, we envision a world where wildlife thrives in healthy land and seas valued by societies that embrace and benefit from the diversity and integrity of life on Earth. WCS Belize is one of the five programs within the region that has been operational for the last 35 years, um, more than 35 years, to be honest, that focus on technical and scientific work and working with partners, both fisheries, forestry, and the NGO community um, to be able to facilitate our, our goals and our vision within the country. So a uh, few of the things that we've worked on within when it comes to wildlife crime, illegal wildlife trade, um, one of them is something that I personally deal with is the Hikite work that we have done. In 2019, we did a social survey within 11 communities um, in the Belize River Valley um, area, which was highlighted by Felicia as one of the areas that highly hunt and consume the species. We do know that they consume it. Um, we didn't know how much or by where or, you know. So what we found was that 79% of the household that we interviewed acknowledge that they still consume the Hikite species. Um, and as you can see, I got a really nice plate of rice and beans with hikite and salad, traditional Belize River Valley dish that you'll get um, for a special occasion, Easter, La Ruta Maya. And what you see at the bottom here is actually the 2019, um, no, not 2019, 2020 La Ruta Maya, where we went and big on the board was hikite for sale. And at that Ruta Maya, you had police, the police department and the fisheries department on site and they had, you know, a sign saying he gets it for a sale. So some of these people are very bold in, in this aspect. Um, in that case, we did have the fisheries department visiting their boat. Um, and, you know, it, it's a bit difficult, especially when it's cooked meat. So identify. Uh, Ms. Felicia might be able to identify this, but, you know, the court system for this is, is a bit difficult when it has to follow through with this. One of the other things that we figure out is that while it is legal, and there's, they've mentioned the legal regulation within this, that you are able to have three, three, three per person. When you're transporting it, the three of you can't have three, three, and three, because then you're transporting more than the amount prescribed by the law, which is only five per vehicle. So that's kind of some of the misunderstanding that some people do have when they're um, hunting the species, because it is legal. The portion of that is that the law allows for subsistence hunting and for the continued traditional and cultural use, but we continue to see that it's been commercialized even on small scale. So what our, re, what our survey also indicated that there's a price list for the species per individual, which ranges between $41 to $60 um, for the individual turtle. This is, of course, very dependent on size, where you are within the Belize River Valley area. If you have more money, it might be $100. One of the other work that we are focusing, um, that we are now currently working on in the last year, is within the Maya Forest Corridor. WCS managed at 30,000 acres within the Maya Forest Corridor. And some of the activities that we have seen, um, major activities that we have seen, is hunting, fire, and trespassing. Um, this is result data from our smart um, spatial tool that we use, spatial uh, monitoring and reporting tool that indicates to us a heat map of where most of our threat activities that we find. And so this is some of the great things that the smart tool can indicate to us and then can let us know where we need to focus our efforts from. And these threats um, goes on within hunting, firing, and trespassing. 
whereby we often find people encountered within the era either hunting, sometimes also fishing within the site. And from that, we find illegal camps within the area. Within those camps, we find evidence of whereby they had poached an animal and probably um, you know, prepare that animal for, for sale or prepare it to take home. We find fires within areas where fire shouldn't be. Um, because we are not doing prescribed burn, we know that fires are happening within the area. So we have evidence of continuously poaching, hunting, um, fires, and, and people within the area that they shouldn't be within the area. So that's one of the other era. In regards to IWT in Belize, WCS did a research, a desktop research. And for us, IWT is basically um, where we look at top species illegally traded on their CITES, illegally unregulated and unreported um, fishing. So for us, we looked at terrestrial flora, rosewood, mahogany, and cedar. Um, for fauna, game species we looked at is Amadillo, paca, colored peccary, red bracket deer, white lip peccary, white tail deer, and we sum that up within one. And then also parrot, as mentioned here before, parrot has been the highest illegally trade. And also some of the aquatic species are in in this are conch, lobster, sea cucumber, vera, shark species within that. And we can see that totally lost is roughly in Belize is about 61 million when it comes to IWT trade. And this is one of the things that we highlighted within this study. Um, the timeline for the information gathered was between 2012 to 2018. And you can see for timber alone, the value of the trade is about 36 million. And our demand is high for local and international. So it's happening both locally in country and also um, international. And we know this, especially um, in previous years with the Rosewood cases that we've had. When it comes to game species, the demand is locally, or what we could have found was locally, um, is around 22 million, the value of the trade, and this is in Belize dollar. In sharks, the high demand was international. Um, our our um, counterpart in WCS Belize, who spoke on regional, talked about how some of that trade happened um, transboundary, how some of it goes to Honduras. We've seen how some of that have, or we've looked at investigation of how that gone um, into those areas in Honduras and Guatemala by sea. Um, Parrot, high national and international value, as we have seen, is 1.175 um, 1 million. Demand for count, as we know, count and lobster is regulated by the fisheries department. But then you do know that some is illegally traded, and that goes through transboundary. Some of that is unknown. A lot of that is unknown. And so it's estimated at 72,000. And then for lobster, um, 60,000. 60, what I like to say is that we don't have a lot of data. There's a lot of data limitation. And so that are some of the things that we had trouble with while doing the CITES research when it comes to looking at what the trade is actually worth within country. We don't, you know, interna even internationally, we do don't have that data information readily available. And so it was a lot of desktop talking to experts, going to the different departments, finding out what information was available. And so we were able to sum up some of these numbers that we believe is still undervalued and it's very high. And so a bit of it is we would have to do better when it comes to our data collection and be able to understand what's happening both internationally and locally. And we see some of that already being, um, you know, being better collected, but it's still, you know, a gap where there's a lot of data, um, data gaps within that. And those are honestly the three thematic areas we wanted to look at. Thank you.